I don't think that anyone other than Donald Trump would fight back this way. And I think that's why he is the right man for the job at this specific moment in time. Is there any president you would rather have in office in 2019 woke culture than Donald Trump? <laughs> Question of the day to, to those who weren't. OK, let me preface this. I was going to be talking about uh, the Ukraine scandal and kind of the top five takeaways today. I just wanted to talk with you guys about something personally a little bit. Let me take a minute. So question before I get to this. To those of you out there who weren't Trump fans initially, okay, maybe, maybe you're not even Trump fans now. Um, maybe you supported someone else in the primary. I did. If you thought President Trump would be a disaster, as many of you did, do you know, knowing what you know now, knowing better, do you think that maybe you were wrong? Do you think that maybe, and I'm, I, I will say this, I do now, do you think maybe for this moment in time he is uniquely, he is the only person for the job? Let me summarize it. I didn't realize there were too many questions. That was like nine questions of the day. <laughs> so in summary, I'm getting very near the end of this now. Name that, film, name that movie line. Do you guys know? Mm -hmm. We'll wait for the comment section. To summarize, who did you support in 2016 and has your opinion changed. So let me set some context here, especially in the wake of Russia, in the wake of Kavanaugh. Uh, now you have the Ukraine. I really am at the point where I think that President Trump is the only person who could serve the purpose of highlighting the media and entertainment industrial complex, whatever you want to call it. That's what I call it, the media entertainment industrial complex, because I like to jujitsu that. They're, they're bias. Let's, um, let's take, you know, more recently, both Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani, because I know Giuliani's been getting a lot of flack lately. Granted, he comes across as a little bit nutty, certainly ornery. Like, he, almost in every single interview, he might as well just be saying, like, go f yourself. Like, he always seems <laughs> upset. I get it. But if you watch his interviews, it's been pretty easy, obviously, for the media to try and, and use him to say he's unhinged. But because of Donald Trump, uh, he's at least in part been emboldened in going after the media at this point which I appreciate. Watch his interview with Chris Cuomo. It was trending all over Twitter, and I'm going, wait, are people seeing the same thing that I'm seeing? This is from a couple weeks ago. Is he grumpy? Sure. But he was hammering Chris Cuomo and the media in a way that he, he never has in the past. And I think that's in large part because he was, he was sort of the Republican that the leftist media, the liberal media, gave a pass to for a good chunk of time. After 9-11, remember, he was the man of the year. He's not pro-life. I think at one point he was, uh, there was him and Fred Thompson, and they thought Rudy Giuliani was going to be the guy, I think before McCain or before Romney. I think it was before McCain. So he's been seen as a pretty moderate Republican, and so the media kind of saw him as a, a useful tool. And I think, this is just opinion here, that maybe Mayor Giuliani actually believed that Republicans could play nice with the media and Hollywood. But because these people now have, they hate Trump so much on such a visceral and personal level, they've attempted to lay waste to anyone even associated with President Trump. And I think it's woken up Mayor Giuliani. I think he's probably said to himself, wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 wait. I was the moderate Republican to whom he gave a pass. Now you're gonna treat me this way? Okay, the, the gloves are off. And I think it's been a real awakening uh, for him. And I think that President Trump has served that same role for a lot of people. I, I, let me, full disclosure, I wasn't a Trump guy in the primaries. And sometimes I do, I, I would wish that other conservatives would go after the media as passionately as, as Trump and Giuliani has been recently. Um, think of tried and true conservatives out there. I don't want to throw anyone in the bus or name names, but people who are hyperly intelligent, quick-witted. And I would think to myself, you know, if, if only they just went after the, the media, the entertainment industry with, with the same vigor that Trump does. And if you combined it with their more sort of articulate brand of conservatism, we'd be aces. But they don't. It, and that's because a lot of them are I I don't have to believe that, but that's just, a, we've been waiting for a guy or a gal uh, to do this for a long time. And it's not ideal, but President Trump is not only the best we've got, he's the only guy we've got. So with President Trump and Giuliani, um, Right now, you at least have people who are willing to point out the hypocrisy with, let's go to Ukraine, Biden, right? Point out the corruption, point out the media's bias, which I just, I think is really valuable. And I think it's singularly unique to President Donald Trump, regardless of where you line up, if he's your guy, if you think he's a bloviating jackass, and none of those opinions are invalid. I know, and I know that many of you out there, by the way, are new to the conservative movement or the sort of right wing, anti-woke culture, red pill, whatever you want to call it. And I'm really glad you're here. Okay, we've seen the numbers. We've seen the demographic shifts on YouTube. I, I can't thank you enough. But you do need to know something. Conservatives have talked about this forever. And by this, I mean media bias. 
And we've talked about just how uh, pervasive, just how corrosive it is. We, conservatives have always talked about this. It's, it's almost the primary bitching point of the conservative movement for decades. But it was mostly relegated to just the enclaves of political hobbyists, maybe a few think tanks. Because of President Trump, not anymore. Not anymore. Everyone talks about it. And I do think that is exclusively because of the guy in the White House right now. Th think of this for a second, okay? To put a finer point on it. Outside of the hyperly engaged political conservatives, okay? Put them on the side. Before President Trump, all the way up until 2016, and I'm not exact, I mean this literally, all the way up until the 2016 election, CNN was seen as a down the middle legitimate news network. CNN. It, it, the reason it plays in airports and public spaces, that's, that's their sole viewership, by the way. Whenever you go, oh, what's the viewership? I'm saying, well, I don't know. Do we count all the airports and sports bars where they're playing? The reason that's the case is because for a long time, unlike Fox News and MSNBC, CNN was seen as just a truthful, centrist news network. Now, let, let me rewind this for a little bit of context, okay? In uh, 2015, a lot of conservatives in this industry, the media industry, people who are writers, think tank, folk, commentators, whatever it is, political consultants, I don't know what that means. It means that you don't have a real job and someone liked you and so they gave you a stipend. But a lot of conservatives in the industry, they would kind of joke, but they weren't really joking. They would say that if, if, if Trump won, it wasn't going to be good for their job security. And I heard this from people who were executives at conservative networks. And, and this is because usually being a voice of opposition, being sort of a counter authority is almost always more lucrative for opinion journalism right, because you're fighting the power. But if you go back, and I encourage you to, to, to run a search on my YouTube channel here, if you go back to 2014, 2015, 2016, um, well, I mean, assume, <laughs> assuming the YouTube search gets fixed, so I don't yeah, know, you know, well, it, it just- Might be difficult. You might be able to find it, you might not. You might have to go on my channel here and click uh, date added and go through, what is it, you can go through relevancy or you can go through timeline. Yeah, the no. point is, it'll be difficult. But I want you to, I want you to call me on this. Go back to, to 2015 through 2016. Um, and I said this, I said, if Trump wins, our enemy doesn't change. Meaning, meaning the villain of the American public, th that doesn't change. It's still the media, the entertainment indus industrial complex, that's a mouthful, media entertainment industrial complex, media entertainment industrial complex. I don't know how Bernie Sa Sanders says that with the mil military industrial complex, but you know, good for you, Bernie. <laughs> Still, but that is what it is. Um, it is a complex of media and the entertainment industry. They, they're the one and the same. Um, I remember saying, listen, if Trump wins, it doesn't change anything. Because the primary villain, the primary, I guess you would say, dark force, it's the media. It's the, they're going to be out in full force. They're going to be out even, they're going to be more aggressive if President Trump wins. And this is something I think people need to understand. And they, they missed a lot at Fox and a lot of think tanks because they thought Obama's president right now and so this is a good time for us to, to raise more money because we're fighting the man. The authority, okay, the, the propagandists in charge in large part of American discourse. It wasn't Barack Obama. It wasn't Nancy Pelosi. It, it largely has nothing to do with the person who's holding office at that moment in time. It is the media. It is the entertainment industry. It, it, and I, I should say, no, at, at least it was. I think that's changing, and I think that's why, even though you, this, this flies in the face of what traditional media experts would say, that Donald Trump, a Republican, as president, we've still grown more than ever before. It's the same reason that now YouTube and Google wants to blacklist our content, because they know who's pulling the strings. I wasn't a Trump fan, okay? But let me ask you this. Does anyone actually think that any of the other candidates would have exposed the media the way that President Trump has. Can you think of any, anyone, genuinely, in the Republican Party who would hammer the media and the entertainment, who, who would just live to expose them as relentlessly and vigorously as Donald Trump? I can't. I honestly can't think of a single one, which is a huge part of me that thinks, and I know, I know, I can already see this on Media Matters, that's why a big part of me thinks that President, Tr the presidency of Donald Trump is almost providential. And I'm not saying he's perfect. In the Bible, it says God, God can use an ass. I'm not saying Trump's an ass, but he could be. He certainly is sometimes. Let me use a more recent example, okay, to highlight this point. Um, let's go to Ukraine. Here's the thing. I think former Vice President Joe Biden, I think he's, I think he's a goof. 
but I don't necessarily think that he's guilty of anything that would disqualify him from running for president. Um, certainly not anything that would warrant forcibly removing him from office if it had been discovered while he was vice president. But let, let me recap this here, just so we understand. This was a segment I was originally going to do, and I thank you for spending the time with me as I just sort of let off some... Hopefully, hopefully it's insightful. I have no idea. It's me talking to a... to camera. <laughs> Um, okay, Hunter Biden. Let's go back. Hunter Biden, he got a job uh, with a Ukrainian company, energy company, 50000 a month. He was being paid. A job for which he had zero qualifications. And you're thinking, oh, hold on, are you exaggerating? Some qualifications? No, no qualifications. <laughs> uh, a prosecutor was assigned to investigate the business dealings with Biden's son. Vice President Joe Biden went on publicly, claimed and bragged that he withheld aid in order to pressure the firing of the prosecutor. The prosecutor was fired, the investigation stopped. Now, when asked, President Joe Biden, uh, sorry, vice, former Vice President Joe Biden, it's not like the LGBTQ AIP. Can I just <laughs> say Joe Biden? Do I have to say, we have to say Senator every time someone was, like you served one term, congratulations, you got your pension. You have to call you Senator for the rest of your life? Former Vice President Joe Biden, when he was asked, he said that he never discussed any foreign business dealings with his son. Then there was evidence that emerged of Biden hanging out with his son and those with whom his son conducted business on a regular basis at golf outings together. Now, let's assume that all of this is 100% a misunderstanding. Okay, uh, well, Donald Trump too, to recap, is accused of threatening to withhold foreign aid unless they were bending to his will. However, instead of bragging about it publicly, Donald Trump denied it. The transcripts that he released, at the very least, leave reasonable doubt uh, that he was not withholding funding specifically to try and gather dirt on Joe Biden. And, and Ukrainian officials, mind you, have confirmed that the only hiccups that occurred with foreign aid, and they did occur, but they occurred long after that phone call took place. So unless Donald Trump or the Ukrainian officials had a DeLorean where they could see that a few days down the line or a few weeks down the line there was going to be withholding of military aid or some kind of, they couldn't know. Contextually, they couldn't know. Here's my point. You cannot impeach President Donald Trump and let Joe Biden slide. That's not what aboutism. This is what the media wants to do. That's important. That is important to note. You could not have a more clear cut comparison of something that a media darling did and something that President Donald Trump did. Now, I think if it were anyone other than Donald Trump, I think, I, you, take your pick. I think if it was Marco Rubio, I think if it were uh, Jeb, uh, Jeb, Jeb Bush, I was about to say Jeb W, Jeb Bush, I think they would say, well, I didn't do anything wrong, and they would slide away into the darkness hoping that it blows over. Donald Trump says, no, 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 no. This is what Biden did. Let's hold me to the same standard you're holding them to. Hold on a second, hold on a second. You're gonna do this with Kavanaugh? Let's bring up Bill Clinton. Let's bring up Juanita Broderick. You, you, you swept her under the rug. I don't think that anybody else, and it could be for reasons that are petty. It could be for his own selfish motives, but it doesn't matter. I don't think that anyone other than Donald Trump would fight back this way, and I think that's why he is the right man for the job at this specific moment in time. Is there any president you would rather have in office in 2019 woke culture than Donald Trump? I don't mind the polarization. I think he's a, I think he's a stellar litmus test right now, because even if he's offensive, at least you know somebody's a grown-up if they say, he's not so offensive to me that I want him impeached for something that he didn't do. And here's the thing, if Democrats at the left were being actually honest and they just said, you know what, we, we want to impeach Donald Trump on articles of, of being an asshole. At least, at least they'd be honest, Your Honor, how does he plead? Well, he's a prick. I, at least I think everyone in the country would say, you know what, okay, maybe he's an asshole, but he's our asshole. And he's an asshole who pisses off the asshole who are evil far more effectively than anyone else we could have put in office. I know it's weird to think of someone who being providentially perched into that position because he's an asshole, but that's what I believe. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. The, the, the part of the whole show that you didn't see was our entire Ash Wednesday episode in which we discussed uh, how politics intrudes on non-political parts of life, such as sports, movies, TV, celebrities. So all three of us sat down here for about an hour. You only get access to that if you are a member of Mug Club, of course, uh, signed up at The Blaze. In other words, do that now. Enjoy.